Hey everyone, I've done some work with supercritical CO2 extractions before, but this time I wanted to build a device that uh, didn't require having a tank of liquid CO2, which is something not a lot of people have. And also I wanted to try some different, uh, uh, different ingredients. So I tried cinnamon sticks, uh, ground up, ground coffee, and chopped up vanilla beans. As you can see, the yield is not exactly uh, what you'd call impressive, but this actually isn't too far off from um, you know, a commercial yield using like the best supercritical CO2 extraction techniques. Um, for vanilla beans, you would probably only get about 5% extract. So I actually found a paper talking about extracting vanillin or oleoresin from vanilla beans. And even they were only able to get about 7% at the absolute maximum. And with lower temperature and pressures, which is what I'm working with here, uh, the, the number will be closer to 1 or 2%. I built the extractor by machining a piece of aluminum into two end plates, and I carved an, a gland for an O-ring in, in either plate, and then tapped the center hole with an eighth inch pipe thread. I then used a few 3 8 inch diameter bolts to hold the two end plates together, and I used a piece of acrylic with a half inch hole drilled in the middle uh, as the chamber itself. This is really much better done with metal. I mean, stainless steel would probably be the best material to choose, but I really wanted a, a clear material so that I could see what was going on in the extraction chamber. One problem with using acrylic is that the supercritical CO2 actually penetrates into the plastic itself quite easily. So you really can't uh, leave this set up for a long time, like a day or two, to get more um, oil extracted from your ingredient, uh, because you'd actually end up extracting a lot of the uh, plastic itself. I searched for quite a long time looking for a chunk of glass that would be big enough to hold this amount of pressure and the closest thing I could find was uh, uh, steam boiler gauges to show you the water level inside a boiler and what they consider is high pressure is about 600 psi which is not really enough for this application. This thing will be working at about 1500 psi minimum and ideally it would be more like three or four thousand psi. Since I wanted this to work with dry ice as the source of CO2, I set up another chamber on top of the extractor and built this out of uh, Schedule 80 steel pipe. And these are all stock parts. The valves, uh, all the pipe fittings, and the, and the large steel pipe are all uh, stock for McMaster. I added a small copper disc mesh screen to the bottom of the, of the extraction vessel and then added some fiberglass on top of that just to serve as a filter to keep the particles of my ingredient from getting down into the valve. I cut up about one and a half vanilla beans into small like two millimeter long segments and packed them into my extraction chamber. I then hacked up a piece of dry ice and packed the large steel pipe full of it and then screwed the top on and applied heat to melt all the dry ice into liquid inside the chamber. I tried a few different flow rates, but knowing that my acrylic extraction chamber really shouldn't be exposed to CO2 for a long time, I didn't want to use time periods of like an hour or so. So I was shooting for mostly about 5 to 15 minutes extraction. And what I would do is uh, set the bottom valve just high enough so that there was a, a small flow rate moving through the vessel and the top valve was completely open during this whole process just so that the supercritical CO2 could flow from the top chamber uh, down through the material and then out the bottom. And to catch the, uh, the yield to the product I just put a test tube underneath the, the pipe fitting at the very bottom and what would happen is uh, CO2 would come out and then freeze into dry ice and then I would occasionally heat the test tube just to keep the dry ice from building up. With really low flow rates, the amount of dry ice production wasn't much of a problem and just uh, ambient temperature was enough to melt it. I added a flexible heater to the valve since the decompressing CO2 uh, draws so much heat the valve would actually freeze up pretty often. So a small electric heater prevents that from happening. After I used up all of my CO2, I took the test tube over to the centrifuge and ran it for uh, just a minute or two just to move the contents down to the tip. So there's a few more things to work on. I ideally, like I say, the chamber should be stainless steel or something else. Uh, one, so that the pressure and temperature can be higher, and also so that the, um, 
uh, you know, it doesn't dissolve into the supercritical CO2. You could actually have something that would be long lasting. But the basic idea is here where you'd, you'd pack a reservoir full of dry ice and the dry ice you can get anywhere, you know, even grocery stores have it now. And then uh, seal it all up and, and do your extraction that way without any um, unusual equipment. I think one problem will be the overall yield. So really you're only going to get a few percent of, of mass of what you start with. So your extract is extremely concentrated and I'm not really sure how you would use it. So if you're going to use it in cooking or uh, you know, maybe perfume manufacture or something like that, it would have to be um, very small quantities involved. Or the chamber would have to be much larger than I've designed it. Uh, maybe using stainless steel, the extraction chamber could be, uh, you know, five or ten times as big. Okay, see you next time. Bye.